So I've been reading through some of the comments uh, that I've been getting from my YouTube channel as well as from my blog and I've noticed that uh, some people are asking for a full walkthrough of a guide on how to set up uh, an extreme switch. Um, that probably would be a good idea so I'm going to do that today. This is kind of a, a very basic guide on how to do this. Um, just kind of get your switch up and going. Um, this will be covering uh, your host names, um, just kind of some basic commands on setting up your switch with account names, um, time zones, CLI options, um, kind of locking down your switch a little bit so it doesn't allow Telnet, web interfaces, and then trying to get a VLAN going, um, <clears throat> and a basic uh, default route, and some STPT uh, uh, commands. So well, I'm just going to start off on the like basic switch how you'd get it from the factory. Um, what I like to do when I get to this point is I just hit Q, just disable everything. Um, we're just gonna start from scratch, so that way nothing's really built. Um, sometimes I will uh, get a, uh, oh, what's it called? Um, a failsafe password in there first, just in case something, if I actually do make a save command um, and I don't have, any, have anything in there that I really want uh, to save, but I, w I will make a, a fail safe uh, command right off the bat. So sometimes I'll do that. Um, and then I always turn the management port on as well. But let's get into this and we'll just kind of walk through this. Um, if you're going to have a stack, the first thing you want to do uh, is enable stacking. Um, enable stacking, easy mode. Um, um, so here, you're going to get this error if you're running this in GNS3 right off the bat. So if you get that and you're running this in GNS3, don't worry about it. Um, if you actually have the uh, physical devices, the actual physical uh, extreme switches, um, if you run enable stacking, you'll start going through the commands on actually how to stack up. Usually it's, you know, uh, if you have stack or switch one, going to switch two, just for example, usually you'll use port 49. Um, going down to port 50 and then on switch 2 you'd use port 49 going down to 50 and you just keep that going until you get to the very bottom one and then your 49 port would go all the way back up to switch 1 to 50 if that makes sense. Uh, so we'll just go and bypass that. If you want to hit the host name or set up the host name the first thing you're gonna to have to do is do a configure snmp sys name and we'll just say switch one um, and then as you can see the host name has been swi switched here um, so if you're setting your snmp name they just use that name as your host name so they're kind of killing two birds with one stone uh, with that command there um, the same can be said about the system location configure snmp sys location and I'll just say home because I'm at home. Can't spell today. So you got that. Uh, the next thing we do is this is kind of like more of legacy stuff, but if you get into scripting, um, which is actually being pulled from say a web or a program called NetSite back in the day, or uh, can't remember what Extreme uses now. They have an online portal. Um, you can enable scripting, so it'll actually save the save the commands after you run them. Um, to disable scripting, disable CLI config config CLI scripting. Maybe we got to do that first. And then permanent. So. What this does is it allows a scripting setting, anything that gets ran from that scripting setting to be a permanent setting. <clears throat> so you don't actually have to hit a save command. This permanent actually writes uh, the command to it. So if your switch reboots, it'll actually save. Uh, to disable that, you'll do a disable CLI scripting. Disable CLI. Scripting like that, and then that'll delete it. Uh, the next thing we want to do is set our time zone. Configure 
time zone, name, home central time, 300, and then auto. Dist, the auto dist is uh, auto, uh, automatic daylight savings time. If you're in Arizona or someplace that does not have it, daylight savings time, you would not put that on there. You would probably just leave that off or no dist, no auto dist. So that's what you do. So there's the daylight savings time. Uh, if you want to hit a new user, you could do configure account admin password and then you can say password you just say password so this was oh I gotta type in the current password first which is just blank and then new password we'll just say password enter it again so there's that if you want to create a new user I'll use the create command account admin so it's an admin account. We'll just say admin. We'll say it's a 450. And then we'll give it a password. Um, and then if you want a fail safe account to be set up where you can get to this from a management, interfor management interface or serial connection or SSH, we actually have to enable that. So we can configure fail safe account permit serial. So that is going to allow the serial connection um, to be able to, to use that admin password on the serial port in case you can't get in through you know SSH coming in from, from your switch from an IP address uh, that way. We can also do the same thing with uh, SSH to allow that admin password to be reachable by SSH. Uh, and then we're just going to say it can be used through the management port. This VR is through the, the actual uh, uh, management interface here. So we'll just use that. And then if you want to enable SSH, you can just enable SSH. It'll ask if you want to create a key. Yes, we want to do that. And then your key is generated. So that will be something else you'll have to do. Uh, if you want to lock down your switch a little bit, uh, not to allow Telnet and uh, HTTP, HTTP TTPS, you'll do disable Telnet, disable web HTTP, and then you also have to do HTTPS. It will not do both of them. You have to do each one of these individually. Um, then if you want to start creating your VLANs, first thing you have to do is actually create your VLAN. So do configure VLAN. Uh, we'll just say 100. Create VLAN 100 actually add it to a port I guess if we want to. Ports we'll say all. Create VLAN 100. Oh there we go. Create VLAN 100. So we'll do that and then we can set a name to that as well if we wanted to. Description save V100. We have to do configure. configure v. There we go. And if you want to show that, say show VLAN. And it'll show you all your VLANs. Here's our VLAN that we created. Um, we say show VLAN 100. It'll show us our VLAN, some information. It'll show you which virtual router it's in, um, <coughs> and if it's if it's forwarding any any uh, IP space, any IP address, um, anything like that. So here's a quick a good command for that. 
Um, trying to think of other stuff that I need to do. Create a VLAN. So if we create that VLAN, maybe we want to, we, we had already added it to some ports, so show port. So on Cisco, it would be a show interface command. On the extreme, it's gonna be show port command. You're gonna notice this green arrow or green uh, square that keeps flashing back and forth. This is a live view of all these ports. So when you see this, um, it's actually updating all of these ports at the same time. So if I was actually to say disconnect this line, you're gonna see it actually went away. So that port went away because it's a live, a live feed. If we create that back to the switch, you're gonna see it came back and it says full again. So it sees the connection. So it's a live view. That's a really handy command when you're out in the field. Um, if you do not want to see that, you'd say a no refresh port port and no refresh yeah there. so then this will just give you a static entry for those ports <clears throat> um, we can also add an interface to that VLAN if we want to say this is going to be our management uh, VLAN so we say configure VLAN 100 IP address 10.10.10.1 slash 24. So now we have a uh, IP address assigned to this VLAN. Let's say we wanted to create a default route. We could do that by doing a configure IP route add default. Say 10.10.10.224. Sorry. Do that. Um, we can also create, uh, set up logging if we wanted to. If you want to create logging, uh, so that way everything gets saved. Let's say enable log target console. That'll save everything locally on the switch. Um, and you can also start seeing that we're going to start seeing all of these uh, pop-ups here that's saying you can't get to uh, the DNS server. This is the logging starting to take effect. Um, everything's defaulted here on the switch, so if it's erroring out, it's going to throw all these errors um, right on your screen. If you don't want that, you can just say a disable command. So you can just change this enable to disable and those will start going away. <clears throat> um, you can also enable uh, SNTP. If there's an SNTP server that you don't want to go to. We say configure SNTP primary. Um, we can say ntp.pool.org, I think is a public NTP server. We can say VR, VR default because of Right now we just have uh, one default route. <clears throat> and then we would say enable SNTP. Uh, that would your, enable your SNTP. Um, if you actually have interfaces being routed from this switch or from this router and you want to enable uh, DHCP relays to get out to a DHCP server, you'd have to enable uh, DHCP through something called boot P relay on the extremes. So you'd say configure boot P relay add, then you'd say whatever your uh, DHCP server would be. I'm just going to say it's that VR and then you would send it out whatever uh, virtual router you is, you'd want. Since we just have the default, we'll just use that. Um, so you set that and then you would say enable boot P relay IPv4 and then the VLAN that you want to add. So 100. Oh, VLAN. VLAN. Oh. VLAN 100. Like that. OK. 
Okay. Uh, or something else you'd want to do maybe would be set up LCP or LACP. Um, LACP is handled in extreme by something called sharing ports. Um, you can still say it's uh, an LACP trunk, um, but in, a, in the extreme world, it's just called sharing. Uh, it's just handled by one command. If you want to enable it, you just say enable sharing and then port we'll say five that will be your main port so your primary port and then you'd say your groupings and then say you want five and six to be part of the port channel or the lag or in this case the sharing port an algorithm uh, LACP and then you'd say enable so what this command is doing is it's saying we are going to use port 5 is going to be our primary or our, our, our main port that we are going to make all the configuration changes to is going to be on port 5. It's going to be our primary and we're going to have it in a grouping state and then 5 and 6 are going to be part of our LACP link to set up LACP. So when you actually go in to make a command or a change to uh, your LACP, you're actually going to have to configure this on port 5. So you'd say configure VLAN, VLAN you know, 100. Um, you'd say add ports. If you tried Aaron 6, I think you're going to get an error. Yeah, so it says port 6 is part of a load sharing port. So you have to make all your cons all your configuration changes on your master, which is, in this case, port 5. So to do that, we just come back here, change that to 5, and then it'll say it's been untagged on port 5. So that's how you do your port, port sharing, quote-unquote, LACP. Um... What else would you have to do? Uh, if you want to set up uh, SNMP, for example, just a simple um, community string, it should be set SNMP community set. Well, I changed it. SNMP Add community. You'd say read write. We'll just say read only. And then whatever your string you want it to be, we'll just say read only. Just like that. Um, the last thing, what you'd want to do uh, if you want to save all this, um, you'd just want to write a save and then it'll write to primary. That is basically a, a uh, write mem in the Cisco world or a write mem in the Aruba world. That's <clears throat> the last thing, if you want to do a show config, uh, you know, in Cisco you do a show run. Well, in the extreme, you do show config. And that will show you all of the, your configuration changes that you've made on your port. Um, if you do a show config and do a question mark, all of these little... Uh, I, uh, you know, configuration uh, aspects here, um, you can actually search by this uh, by name. So if you want to say LACP, it'll take you directly to your LACP stuff. Uh, if you want to go straight to, uh, what's another one we have? Da -da 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 -da. I'm trying to look. We have SNMP. So there we can see some of our SNMP stuff that we have. Um, what else did we do? We did VLANs, so we could say VLAN, it'll take us to straight to all of our uh, VLAN configurations. If you want to unconfigure the whole entire switch, like set it back to default, uh, you could do it, unconfigure, switch, all, and then reboot, and that'll take that switch completely back to default settings, uh, back from the factory, and then you'll have a brand new switch again.